One of the best, yet least talked about NFL seasons in recent memory happened in 2023 when Miami Dolphins running back Raheem Mostert scored a franchise record 20 touchdowns, more than what he scored in his entire career combined. To put that in perspective, Mostert's 18 rushing touchdowns is tied for the most by any player since 2006, when LaDainian Tomlinson rushed for an NFL record 28 touchdowns. But what makes Mostert's 2023 season truly incredible isn't just the number of touchdowns he scored or his monstrous four touchdown game against the Broncos in week three. In a league where the average career span of a running back is only two and a half years, and most in the position see a massive performance decline by their mid-20s, Raheem Mostert was able to not only play a major role in one of the best offenses in the league, but led the entire NFL in rushing touchdowns at the age of 31, all while being an undrafted free agent, bouncing around between seven different teams before ever seeing an NFL snap, and suffering several gruesome season-ending injuries along the way. It really begs the question how something like this is even possible in the first place. But to truly understand the answer, we have to look back at Mostert's unbelievable journey to get where he is today. Growing up in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, Raheem Mostert had to overcome more challenges than many of us will in a lifetime, including accidentally shooting himself in the foot when he was a young child. Thankfully, Mostert recovered and turned to sports at an early age. He attended New Smyrna Beach High School, where he played wide receiver for the football team and excelled at track and field. On the gridiron, Moster returned 9 kickoffs for touchdowns and had 39 receptions for 723 yards and 4 touchdowns as a senior. Moster was graded on most sites as being a two-star recruit and he ultimately chose to attend Purdue University. I feel really confident, you know, just going, going out there and trying to do my best and hopefully have the starting position. After a productive first couple seasons with the Boilermakers, including this kick return touchdown in the Little Caesars Bowl as a freshman, Mostert explains how things started to go downhill for him after the head coach who recruited him to Purdue, Danny Hope, was fired after his sophomore year. Junior and senior year were tough. I was, you know, I was a starting running back coming in after making a splash on the track. And then after a while, I got benched. Yeah. And then next thing you know, I, had a, I took a back burner. The coach just, I guess he didn't believe in me all that much. Unfortunately, coaches not believing in him would be a common theme throughout Mostert's career, and after struggling to see the field and putting up subpar numbers in college, Mostert would go undrafted in the 2015 NFL Draft. Amazingly, of the 22 running backs who were drafted in 2015, only Melvin Gordon and Amir Abdullah played an NFL snap in 2023, with both running backs combining for less than 200 yards and one touchdown. That's not to slight any of these guys, but it just goes to show how the physical toll of the position the high chance of injury, and teams regularly opting to take a running back in the draft for a cheaper price have made it nearly impossible for running backs to still have productive seasons in their late 20s and early 30s. Not being drafted only motivated Moster even more when the Philadelphia Eagles signed him as an undrafted free agent shortly after the draft. But despite impressing the organization during preseason, the Eagles ultimately let him go. In Philly, right, with Chip Kelly, we had just signed DeMarco Murray. We had just signed Ryan Matthews, two prominent running backs mm -hmm. <laughs> that were leading the league in rushing at some point in their doing career. Doing their thing. Doing their thing. And then you had Darren Sproles, which is like. He does his thing different than everybody else. He, everybody else. He's on his own pace. I'm looking back and I'm like, man, how did I really like come out of that? His release from the Eagles would only be the beginning of countless disappointments throughout Mostert's NFL career. Between September and December 2015, Mostert would bounce around between the practice squads of three different teams, first with the Miami Dolphins, then with the Baltimore Ravens, and finally with the Cleveland Browns, who signed him shortly before the season ended. The following season, Mostert looked like he would finally play his first NFL game, making the 53-man roster with the Browns for the first time in his career. We were with the Browns. Yeah. And mm, there we go. Um, you remember, we celebrated at Hyde Park. We had a, a yeah. nice state dinner. However, Moster and his family received a crushing blow just a day later when the Browns notified him that they were going to cut him after all. To make it even worse, it was on the same day as his wife's bridal shower. Moster shared the news with his father-in-law, who was at the bridal shower as well, and the two decided to wait until after the event was over to break the news. I call him up, I'm like, hey Kev, like, you mind stepping away from the girls for a second? He's like, yeah, what's up bud? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And he had no idea. And so I called him out, and once I said that, hey, look, step away from the ladies, I got to tell you something. And he was like, yeah, what's up, bud? Like, what's going on? 
And I was like, you, you wouldn't even believe this, like, if, even if I told you. But you, I don't know if you know, but I, I just got released by the Browns. And he's like, no shit. Like, are you kidding me? He's like, dude, you just made the roster. And I was like, yeah, I know. And he was like, all right, all right. Well, um, yeah, I think the best thing to do right now, um, he's like, have you told Dev yet? And I was like, no, nah, I didn't tell I'm not going to tell her. I'm not going to tell Dev. He's like, all right, that's good. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's let's wait until, um, you know, later on tonight, and then we'll talk about it. Years later, Mozart has said his release from the Browns was one of the lowest points of his career. Not only was he let go just a day after being told he had made the team, but Cleveland was just a half hour away from where his wife grew up. On top of that, she was the last one to know out of everyone at her own bridal shower. Mozart would be signed and released by the New York Jets and Chicago Bears, before finally landing in San Francisco, where he was signed to the 49ers practice squad on November 28th. Mostert played in three games for the team that season and finally earned the first NFL carry of his career. After grinding and overcoming so much during his time in the NFL, no one could understand how meaningful a single carry for six yards was besides Mostert himself. His playing time would only go up from there, and after earning just 6 carries in 11 games for the 49ers in 2017, Mostert continued to keep his head down and contributed by making big plays on special teams. On November 1st, 2018, in what looked like a pretty meaningless game between two one-win teams, Mostert finally had his opportunity to shine and prove to all the teams that had cut him in the past what he was truly capable of by scoring this 52-yard touchdown, the first in his career. However, Literally five minutes later in that very same game, Mostert would encounter yet another roadblock when he broke his arm and had his season come to an end right when it looked like things were about to take off. But unlike all the other teams that had given up on Mostert in the past, the 49ers saw potential in him and would re-sign him to a three-year deal before the start of the next season. The decision by San Francisco to bring back Mostert would be one of the smartest decisions they'd make all year. Despite sharing the backfield with Tevin Coleman and Matt Breida, Mostert's electrifying performances made it impossible for the coaching staff to keep him on the bench. His unique blend of vision, acceleration, and tenacity turned routine plays into highlights. Mostert's role expanded as the season progressed, with the breakout game of his career coming against the Baltimore Ravens, where he rushed for nearly 150 yards and a touchdown. Uh, yeah, definitely emotional. You know, I've been here uh, my rookie year when I was with the Ravens. Yes, it did. Um, you know, I didn't really have a good experience when I was here, um, you know, but I mean, I made the most out of my opportunities when I was and it was kind of like I wasn't holding on to a grudge, but I really did want to show uh, the organization what, you know, what they missed out on and um, it, it worked to, to my benefit. Mostert will get the opportunity to not just show the Baltimore Ravens, but the entire NFL what he could do in the NFC Championship that same year. Arm may be wrist injury for Tevin Coleman in a lot of pain. Determined to answer the call after starting running back Tevin Coleman went down, Raheem Mostert buckled up his chin strap and went to work. After gashing the Green Bay Packers for four touchdowns and a 49ers postseason record 220 yards, Raheem Mostert had officially arrived. Uh, you know, I did have a lot of doubters and naysayers, and uh, you know, now I get to actually tell them, "Hey, look, look where I'm at now." You know, I never gave up on my dream. I never gave up on, on the opportunities when it presented itself, and you know, I always, I always worked hard, no matter what. Entering the 2020 season with hype around him for the first time in his career, Moster picked up right where he left off at the NFC Championship game. He scored two huge touchdowns in the first two games of the year, including this 80-yard score against the Jets, where Moster reached an insane top speed of over 23 miles an hour. But things came crashing down once again for Moster, who ended up missing half the 2020 season with injuries, followed by this devastating news just two carries into the first game of the 2021 season. Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Somewhat surprising news if uh, you're a San Francisco 49er fan. Raheem Mostert's season is officially over. It seemed like season-ending knee surgery at the age of 29 and the 49ers refusing to re-sign him at the end of the 2021 season could be the end of this underdog story. But out of the darkness came a familiar face, 
Mike McDaniel. Before becoming the Dolphins head coach in February 2022, McDaniel spent several seasons as an assistant coach alongside Mostert in San Francisco. A little over a month after becoming a free agent, Mostert was given another chance at redemption by resigning with a team that had cut him almost seven years earlier. Fully healthy and hungry to prove he still had plenty left in the tank, Mostert started 14 of 16 games in 2022 and finished with 891 yards and three touchdowns. But it would be the 2023 season, at the age of 31, where Mostert would put together by far his best season, finishing with over 1,000 yards for the first time in his nine-year career and tying CMC for the most combined touchdowns all season. When it comes to how an undrafted 31-year-old was able to break records and lead the NFL in rushing touchdowns, there's really no one answer. The fact that Mostert played sparingly throughout his college and early pro years contributed to his longevity, but the fact that Mostert kept getting up each time he got knocked down, had no problem making an impact on special teams, and refused to ever quit or give up makes this, to me, one of the best and most well-deserved comeback stories of all time.